Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. In fact, dance yourself right. Oh my goodness, you're mighty light on your feet. Look, you look wonderful. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading With Your Kids podcast, an iTunes number one kids and family podcast, and an iHeartRadio Podcast Awards Best Kids and Family nominee. We're really excited that you're here today. One of our most anticipated guests, Candace Cameron Bure. She is here to tell us about her brand new book, Candace Center Stage, and about a whole lot of other things, too. One of the other things that Candace and I talk about is is sparking kids' imagination and how wonderful that is. Well, if you're looking for the perfect holiday gift for the curious kid in your life, I have to tell you, little passports, that's it. That is the perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun-filled packages right to their door every single month. Filled with engaging, hands-on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs that are just waiting to be discovered. Little Passport's monthly subscriptions are designed to spark children's curiosity about geography, world culture, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica, to building a Big Ben like the one in England, or making an ancient Greek headpiece. Every month, it's a different adventure that'll fuel their imaginations and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It is the perfect holiday gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. you got to check it out. I mean, I really, I'm so proud that Little Passports is sponsoring this. I think that this is such a, a fantastic product, and I think that the kids, the curious kids in your life are going to love it. Check it out today. Order it today. Littlepassports.com slash reading. Go to littlepassports.com slash reading. Joining us on the line right now is uh, from, from beautiful Los Angeles in California. She is the author of, of an amazing new children's book called Candace Center Stage. Please welcome to the show author, best-selling author, and also TV star Candace Cameron Bure. Candace, how are you? Hi, Jen. I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show. I'm excited uh, to learn more about Candace Center Stage. It's uh, uh, bringing back some memories. My daughter was a dancer from the age of two and a half to adulthood. Oh, really? Yes, yes. It was a it was a really wonderful, positive experience for her. Um, I, I think a little bit different than than Candace's experience. But uh, why, don't, why don't you tell <laughs> us a, a little bit about the book? Well, first I'll tell you, writing this book has been a 20-year dream of mine. I've published several other books, mm-hmm. but writing a children's book has been just a first a first want and desire and wish of mine, so I'm so glad that it's finally here, and this is just the first of many stories that Candace will, will tell, little Candace will tell in, in more books, but Candace Center Stage is about um, a little girl that has a pretty big personality. And she thinks that she's a great dancer and she doesn't really need any dance lessons. But her mom puts her in ballet class and she soon realizes that she's not quite as graceful as she thinks she is. Mm -hmm. Uh, But her mom encourages her to to keep at it and working hard, which she does. And and she gets scared but works through her fears. And and ultimately, she... She it works out for the best, and she has a great little recital, and even encourages the other girls just by being herself in the class. And um, in each each little story, it's about having a, a good positive message for kids that uh, that parents can can talk about with their kids, and and also just learning to know that it's okay to be you, and you don't have to be afraid to ever try just for fear of failing, because you'll never know unless you do try. I, I think those are really, really important messages, and I especially like that uh, idea of, of letting kids know that they can try, and, and trying is the goal, not, not necessarily succeeding or being the best, but exactly. just trying. Yep, I, didn't, I feel like I didn't learn that message early enough in my life, mm-hmm. and as I've gotten older, it's really has been the 
one of the best pieces of advice that I, that I ever learned is, is to not be afraid of failure. And if I can encourage my own kids to do that and, and other little ones reading and, and just parents to encourage that message, because there's so much within us, but if we let fear hold us back, we'll absolutely never know what we're, what we're capable of. And the, and the worst thing that's going to happen if we fail is just, that yeah we we fail but we can always get back up and try again or try something different that we might enjoy more or be more successful at you know that's one of the things that i i I hear from a lot of of parents is that uh, a lot of parents these days seem to kind of wrap their kids in bubble wrap and do everything they can so that the kid doesn't fail um I, I was a competitive soccer player and coached at a very competitive high school team. And um, when, when my kids were of the age of, of youth soccer, I was asked to coach a team and went over and discovered that they didn't keep score. And I thought, how preposterous <laughs> is this? All these kids are keeping score. <laughs> it's just you adults who are kidding yourselves. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I have my husband was a professional hockey player for 12 years and both my boys play hockey and are now uh in high school and and college age but yeah we've never been fans of everyone gets a trophy Mm -hmm. because the reality of life is that everyone doesn't get a trophy and we have to learn how to be okay with that Mm -hmm. but it also when you are able to succeed it it really does build your self esteem and you, and it's okay to be proud of that if mm-hmm. you are the best at something mm-hmm. it, there's no shame in that but if you're not great you have to understand and learn how to deal with uh rejection or disappointment but you can go on and try something else that's mm-hmm. the great thing absolutely hey candace i just have to, i'm just so proud i'm going to i'm going to share this with you uh, you you have a hockey playing family we have a new foster niece in our family, and she's amazing. I love her. She, at 14 years old, was the first time she ever saw an ice skating rink. And someone asked her if she wanted to be on her middle school hockey team, and she said, sure, not knowing what that was. And, <laughs> and, and she went on, and she fell in love with the game, and she has been th- <laughs> she's been working so hard learning how to skate, learning how to play hockey. She actually – made it to um, uh, 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 the Boston University hockey camp over the summertime and is trying out for her high school team now. And it's... Oh, uh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. And it's just like that that whole thing. She understands that the odds of her just skating and not breaking a leg are very uh-huh. <laughs> slim. But she, it doesn't matter. It's This is something that she wants to do. And I'm so proud of her. And I love that that's... A message that you you're getting out through your book is just that. Hey, give it a shot. Yeah, so, absolutely. So important. I, I'm I'm curious. Uh, you you mentioned that writing a, a children's book it was a, a lifelong dream. What what was it about writing children's book that was so important for you? Candace will be back to tell us why writing a children's book was so important to her. Before that, I I know that you put a lot of thought into what kind of gift you get the kids in your life, especially those curious kids, the kids whose eyes sparkle, the kids who want to know how things work and want to know uh, uh, about the world around them, or the kids that that, that you want to ignite that curiosity to end. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Little Passports is the perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun-filled packages right to their door every single month, filled with engaging, hands-on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs just waiting for them to be discovered. Little Passports' monthly subscriptions are designed to spark children's curiosity about geography, world culture, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica to building a Big Ben like the one in England or making an ancient Greek headpiece, every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imagination and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It is the perfect gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. Order yours today by going to littlepassports.com slash reading. littlepassports.com slash reading. You mentioned that writing a, a children's book it was a, a lifelong dream. What what was it about writing children's book that was so important for you? 
Well, my, I, ever since I had, my, I have three kids mm-hmm. and it really has been one of my favorite things, my favorite pastimes now to do with my children. I loved reading with them. It was such special moments, whether we were sitting on the floor, on the couch or in bed before, you know, they would go to sleep. I would always read them stories. I loved looking at beautifully illustrated books with them. Mm -hmm. And it was a time that we could use our imaginations together. We could be silly. We could talk in character voices, reading books. We could learn to read together when they were really young. And then, you know, there's that moment when they can read and they read to you. And there are just so many special memories that I have, but it was something I would do daily with my children Mm -hmm. to read to, to them. And it wasn't just for the educational purposes. It was just like such bonding time Mm -hmm. and such a special time together. So ever since my, my children were born, I I mean, I was, I was reading to them when they were infants. I mean, just as soon as they came out of the womb, I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm reading books to you. Mm -hmm. So that's when it started. I'm like, one day I would love to write a book or write several books that my I could read to my kids and now really it, I'm going to be reading my books to my to my grandchildren because <laughs> uh, it's been you know it's 20 years later but um I just think reading is is so it's just so special and it's a special time w- and whether it's your own children or or nieces and nephews grandchildren it's something very different to me than even, you know, just sitting on a computer or watching television together because there's an imaginative aspect to it. And even though the words and the pictures are there for you, you can still be even more creative than than the book and mm-hmm. it can spark conversation. And uh, it's just this wonderful tool to bond. Yeah. You're... You're, you're preaching to the choir here because that, you know, that's why I created the podcast. I understand that now with my kids at 22 and 25, you have a great relationship with them. And I know that that relationship started on the couch or in the bed when we're snuggled up together, when they were just barely able to open up their eyes and, mm-hmm. and started reading to them. And, and like you said, talking and using your imagination and asking them questions, what do you think, and empowering them by giving them a chance to tell us what they think. I mean, can yeah, you very exactly. rarely get a chance to say that. I love, yep. I love the fact that this is so important to you, and if you don't know already, uh, Candace left a very successful career as one of the stars in the hit series Full House to, to be a mom and to raise her kids. That's how important this was for her. I imagine you must have heard some people tell you, oh, that's crazy that you're leaving. You're at the top of your game. You got to stay with it. Uh, Did you? Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly did hear that back in the, back in the day, but, uh, because I, I, I mean, I've been working, I've been working virtually my whole life since I was five years old and, you know, was on the show full house and, and then was married at 20 years old. And we started a family. I was 22 when I had my first, daughter and that's when I decided to to not work and usually at, at that age every you're starting to go into the workplace mm-hmm. and yet I had already uh l- had quite a career and when you do have a career in entertainment a lot of people will advise against walking away from it mm-hmm. if if you're at the top of it so coming off of a successful show and then saying hey I'm going to I'm going to take a few years out. And in my case, I stayed at, I was a full-time stay at home mom for 10 years. Um, they're like, well, you may never be able to come to come back again. People might forget you. And, uh, and I, I was okay with that. I'm like, cause I, I just think God has a, a, a knows my heart and knows, uh, I want to follow his lead. And I think it's incredibly important that I be a, I, I be at home for my children. Cause I want to be the one with my husband raising my kids. Mm-hmm. And so, I took those 10 years off and it was such a wonderful time. I, 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 it was, it was a difficult transition at moments for me uh, because I'd been working for so many years before that it was quite an adjustment to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. But I'll tell you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give anything, um, to have made a different decision. I mean, it was just 
it was so right for me and my family. And I, I value that time to be with my children and to also grow and become the woman that I am today. I don't think I would have done that had I not taken that time off of work. And obviously I came back into the entertainment industry, uh, about 10 years ago and, uh, and and I'm doing okay. I, I'd say that you're doing okay. Um, <laughs> for, if, she's back as DJ Tanner on Fuller House, and you're a um, a finalist on season 18 of Dancing with the Stars. What was that experience like? And was with did some of that experience play into um, uh, the current children's book? Yeah, it did. That was such a, an incredible experience in my life. One that was truly about uh, not letting fear get the best of me because that is a, I'll tell you, it's a scary show to be on, especially if you have no dance background, which I took one tap and ballet class when I was, I, I mean, one season of tap and ballet when I was five years old, uh -huh. had my little recital at the end of a couple months and that was about it. So uh, in that sense, it, it does relate to my the book, Candace Center Stage, but also I developed such a love and passion for dance, and I, I prefer watching it more than I do actually dancing, but um, it's why I wanted to have little Candace start in a with a dance book. Because I just, I think so many kids can relate to it, mm -hmm. and um, and certainly the influence of being on Dancing with the Stars and and loving and appreciating the beauty of dance uh, made such an impact on me. Yeah. Uh, well, I, it's, it's hard for me to believe that I actually had more dance class experience than you did before you were on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you did. Well, I, I want to find out what's what's next uh, for, for little Candace. But first, I, as I was looking through your, your biography and everything, one of the books that, that popped out, is the title Kind is the New Classy. Can you just take a minute to tell us uh, about that book? Because I'm sure, I mean, I just, I just love that, that whole notion. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, a book that came out earlier this year. And I also co-hosted The View mm -hmm. for two years. And if anyone's watched that talk show, I mean, you know, it, it's, uh, it's serious in politics and it's five women sitting at a table that have different, very different opinions, mm -hmm. and we discuss current events. And and I I uh, really grew as a, a person and a businesswoman, and really found my voice because I had to being a co-host on the View. But within that, I have always wanted to have conversations with people that I don't share the same opinion with mm -hmm. and never have it go sour mm -hmm. in the sense that it becomes angry or even more divisive. I want to have conversations with people to hear their opinion, to learn something from them. And I also want to share my voice and my opinion and have it be heard by them. And I've always wanted to have civil discourse, to have kind and classy conversations, even when we are on opposite ends of viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And so that was what, that was what drew me to write kind of the new classy and really dive, dive into that and how that look can look in our everyday life and how, how to, it's like such a, it's such a simple thing being kind, but it's something that I feel in our, in our society and culture today, and especially when it comes to politics with people, it's kindness seems to be overlooked. And I wanted to put that spotlight back on kindness and respect. Well, I'm, I'm certainly glad you did because I absolutely agree with you. It is, it, it's really discouraging. Um, just at the, at the vitriol that people throw at each other. Um, and it, it, it's, you know, I, it's it's sad that that we're living in an age where somebody has to write a book about hey we can sit down and disagree and and not tear each other's heads off right <laughs> it's just... i know it's kind of, it's it's a it's a bit sad in the sense that uh, as a society we have to be reminded but but we do and i'm happy to have to be a small voice in in that campaign of kindness yeah but 
But if we if we all just did our part, I tell you, kindness has such a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. If you're just kind to someone in a day, whether it's a smile, it's a hello, it's a, hey, can I do anything for you? Do you need something? You can literally change a person's day. And then that person, because they are happier for it, they will be kinder to the next person. Mm -hmm. My my wife and I lead our our church's um, homeless ministry. And it's a very simple ministry. We serve dessert once a week. Um, at, at a homeless shelter, and it's amazing. You just look at one of the guests and offer them a cupcake, and they're just, and they're just yeah. whatever they experience just kind of falls away for that moment, and they smile, and uh, you know, it, there, there's a brightness in their eyes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. So, tell us what kind of adventures can we expect Candace to get into in the future? Oh, little Candace uh-huh. or big Candace? <laughs> I think both, but we'll start with little Candace. <laughs> well, we haven't released the second book, but I, I have already written that, and that's going to take uh, that's going to take you into her classroom, mm-hmm. and we're going to learn some lessons about growing <laughs> and being oh. patient, <laughs> um, and. And hopefully many, many more to come. I have so many ideas that are just budding and waiting. So hopefully everyone will, will go, go out and grab this book. And, and, uh, if we do well enough, then we'll have, we'll have more and more Candace adventures. Absolutely. And any adventures for the, um, grown up Candace on the, on the horizon? Well, I do have, um, my new Hallmark Christmas movie, it's my seventh Christmas movie, will be out November 25th, and it's called The Shoe Addict's Christmas. I just finished up uh, filming that. And I have many more Aurora Tea Garden mystery movies coming out on the Mysteries and Movies channel on Hallmark. And, uh, and then season four of Fuller House will be out at the end of the, end of the year on Netflix. Wow, you know, you, sh- you sh- should find some motivation to get up and do something. <laughs> I know, right? (laughs) Well, we've had a pleasure speaking with you today. I want to encourage everybody to check out uh, Candace's uh, brand new children's book. It's it's beautiful. The illustrations are beautiful. They're fun. And the name of the book is Candace Center Stage. Our guest today has been Candace Cameron Bure. Candace, I've had a great time speaking to you. I, I hope you come back when the next books come out. Oh, thank you. I would love to. Thanks for having me on. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guests will be welcoming back Fiona Ingram. You may remember Fiona Ingram. She is the author of the Chronicles of the Stone series. She's coming back to tell us about the brand new chapter in that series called The Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper. The next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast, Fiona Ingram. Hey, if you are the author of a great children's book, you don't have to be a TV star like Candace Cameron Bure. You don't have to be a uh, returning guest. You don't have to be a best-selling author. If you are the author of a great children's book, we would love to help you tell the world about that great book by having you on as a guest of the podcast. Being a guest on the show, it's fun, it's easy, and it is absolutely free. All you need to do is go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button. Let us know about your great book. We'll let you know about the next easy steps. They are really, really easy. Hey, we also want you to know how easy it can be to find that perfect gift for your curious kid on your list. Little Passports. Little Passports is the perfect holiday gift for that curious kid on your holiday shopping list. With the subscription to Little Passports, kids get a fun-filled package Every month designed to inspire the curiosity in geography, world cultures, or science. For kids of all ages, order today at littlepassports.com slash reading. And remember, by going to littlepassports.com slash reading, you are helping support the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And we love that. And we love that Candace Cameron Bure was our guest today. Thank you so much, Candace, for being here. And of course, thank you. Thank you so much to for, for subscribing to the show on iTunes, on iHeartRadio, on Stitcher, on uh, Podcast Addict, on Himalaya, wherever you listen to your to your podcast. Please, 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 if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you 
Listen on a couple of different platforms. Subscribe on those different platforms. We love it. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.